Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Keith. Thanks for joining me. You probably clicked on this because you saw the high voltage symbol on there maybe. That's a high voltage battery. This is the battery cable. 10 gauge wire. Crazy to think that's all it needs for these two giant batteries to power that inverter to power my entire house. So in this video, I'm going to go over the LG high voltage bundle with the Grolwatt 11.4 kilowatt inverter and the SYN 200 amp transfer switch. Uh, I got these straight from Signature Solar. This was a bundle. I will throw a link down below for their website and this bundle, and also my coupon code to save you a little bit more extra money on top of their sales they have. So if you are interested in any of this stuff, stick around, check it out. I'm gonna go over my initial thoughts, some of just briefly how everything is hooked up and wired, and uh, Tell you what I think of it. So let's jump into it. All right. So now that I got this system all set up, hooked up, power in my house, I'm going to go over some of the things I liked and didn't like about setting this thing up. Um, first of all, the high voltage stuff. High voltage batteries are pretty darn cool, considering battery cable. 10 gauge battery cable. That's just insane to me to think that. All you need is some 10 gauge wire to hook up these batteries to this inverter to power an entire house. I just I just can't get over that. It's just crazy to me to think that 10 gauge wire is all we need. But when you do the math, 400 volts. So overall installation cost of this project was considerably less than your typical 48 volt system. Not only were the batteries cheaper, the inverter was cheaper, and wiring, just general wiring, was much cheaper, uh, which is pretty sweet if you ask me. Um, however, commissioning the system, the wiring part was easy. That was not difficult, you know, following the wiring diagram to get everything hooked up where it should. Super easy. However, using the, the Shiner app, which is the Watt app, to commission everything and get it set up, get your account set up, get the right permissions, that was not very user-friendly. I was struggled with that for a day and a half. <laughs> um, I did watch Signature Solar's video on setting up this same system, but theirs was the older version of the inverter. This is the version three. Theirs was, I believe, the version one or two. Uh, the version three uses only the Shiner app and not the old OSS system that the V1 and 2 used. So that part made it a little bit more difficult because, of course, I went right to that and started doing that, and then I realized I didn't need to do that. But follow the instructions in the book that comes with the system because that makes it easier. It gives you step-by-step -step which app to use for everything, and that was partially on my fault because I didn't follow it step by step. However, I did kind of reset everything and started to go through step by step. And I still had to make a phone call to Grillwatt customer service, which shout out to them. Customer service was great. I called, you hit the number for which inverter you have, and I no hold time, write to a person. They're based out of... Uh, the US somewhere. The guy was very helpful. He stepped me through everything. I did manage to get my inverter online before I called. So he was able to remote in, look at it, set up a couple things for me and reset my passwords and username and whatnot. So that was very helpful. Without his help, I went to got it online as fast as I did. So thank you to them. They were uh, fantastic. Very similar to calling Signature Solar. When you call Signature Solar, right to a person. They're all very helpful, very knowledgeable. Overall cost of the system. Uh, this whole setup was, I believe right around the $8,000 price range. Um, not sure exactly. Prices fluctuate from time to time, but go to Signature Solar, go to their website, check it out. Uh, I'll throw the links down below. Back to overall cost, uh, just to compare. One of these batteries is very similar to the 
EG4 wall mount battery, which is a 280 amp hour, 14.2 uh, kilowatts, I think. 14 point something kilowatts, maybe 14.7. This is a 16 kilowatt battery. And uh, this is about $500 cheaper per battery compared to the EG4. Um, same warranty, 10 year warranty. This is an outdoor rated one. The wall mount indoor one is not outside rated. That one is a couple hundred dollars more from EG4 yet. So bang for your buck. These are probably gonna be it. However, the inverter that came with this, like I said, the commissioning part of it was kind of a headache. You can deal with that if you wanna save some money, overall installation costs. Uh, as far as power output goes, I would compare this to your, uh, the EG4 12,000 XP is a very similar contender to this. Uh, output power is 11.4 kilo, 11.4 kilowatts. The 12,000 is a 12,000 watt output continuous. There's a little bit of information on that. Um, the other thing I really like about the EG4 over this inverter is the app app to use the EG4 inverters are very user friendly, easy to go through, easy to navigate, settings are all there. This one is a little more difficult to navigate, probably because I'm partial to the EG4 stuff because it's I've been used to it for a while. Um, this one you don't get quite as much stats on usage. Um, you can't see like your, your graphing of your solar input for the day your power output for the day. You don't get to see all that added up. It's more of an instantaneous based stuff um, on the app. It's not, it's not, I don't know. I like to sit and watch it and see every day how much solar I brought in, how much consumption I had, where the batteries are at. You can see on, on the GrowWatt app, you can see the battery state of charge for both of them. You can see how much the batteries are pulling. Um, you can see how much solar is coming in. Um, you have to dig through the menus to see what the actual like output going to your, your load panel is, but it is in there. It's just not as user friendly. So with that, it would just take a little bit of getting used to and it'd be fine. There is a web portal as well that you can go to and log in to view all the same stuff and all of your settings are in there as well to change on the inverter. Mine is currently set to off grid. Um, off grid meaning there's no input to the from the grid to my system so this is just solely back feeding my load panel right now and my utility service is shut off um, so that's how i'm powering it it's going through a 50 amp breaker in there the rated output of this is a 48 amp continuous um, so we're all good there uh, my house doesn't really pull that much power uh, it's actually my entire property but uh overall it's it's works great. I mean, I can still run my electric water heater. That's a 4,500 watt electric water heater. I had my uh, water heater going, the well pump running. I had my induction cooktop going. Uh, I was pulling right around that six, 7,000 watt range. Pretty easy. Um, one other thing that I noticed about this unit, there's no cooling fans. There's no fans on here. It has got a giant heat sink on the back of it here. And that's why it sticks off the wall like three, four inches here because it's a big aluminum heat sink on the back. And what you're supposed to have 12 inches of clearance around the whole thing. Uh, same thing with the transfer switch, the SYN. Uh, there is a small heat sink up here. It's not very big because it's not really doing a whole lot. It's just there to monitor power and transfer between grid and stuff. But um, this whole setup here is designed as a whole home backup. So this is designed where you can use it as just a battery storage device. You do not need to have solar hooked to it. Uh, you can configure it where to <clears throat> pull grid power during certain time slots of the day. Maybe if your power is cheaper at different times of the day, you can set it up on the app to do that. You can also set it up where it'll charge the batteries at that time. And then during peak hours, if you have those, uh, it'll use power from the batteries to power your house to save you money. Um, 
which is a neat feature. A lot of the EG4 hybrid units are like that as well. Uh, another thing is it is a hybrid, like I said. So if you do have solar panels, you can power your entire house, if you have enough, off of your solar panels, keep your batteries charged, and then any excess solar you have during the day, you can sell back to the grid. This is capable of doing that. You can put limits on how much it sells back to the grid, uh, what time of the day it sells back to the grid. There's a lot of different options in there that you can configure to optimize your solar usage, I guess. So there's a lot of very in-depth stuff you can do with this inverter. If you're looking for something that's just, I got a remote cabin up north somewhere and I wanna just have lights, a few things running when I'm up there, this is not the unit you're gonna to wanna to get for that. <laughs> um, however, you can. It is capable of running by itself with just a single high voltage battery and doing that with some solar on it. Like I said, mine is set up in off-grid mode, which is zero grid input. So it's configured everything with no grid power. I use the batteries and solar to start everything up, configure it, hook it to the network and stuff and get it set up that way. Um, but if you're looking for a sophisticated way to maybe make a little bit of money or cancel out your electric bill, this unit is very capable of doing that. Um, it's just very cool. There's uh, a ton of settings. Like I, I can't just sit here and go through all of them because I'd bore you to that. But um, I'm going to let this run for a while and see how everything works. I don't foresee any problems with it, but we're going to go with it and see how it does over the next couple weeks. And I'll give you guys an update when I get back to that. And yeah, it's kind of cool. Let's, uh, before I go, I'm gonna test out the rapid shutdown system to see how that works. Light shut off. And let's see here. I got her back. Oh, that boots up pretty quick actually. Not bad. That's pretty impressive. It comes right back online pretty quick. All right, well, there you go. That's that's what it's like when you use e-stop. <laughs> everything works great. Shut everything down, powered back up right away. All right, I just want to jump in here quick because on the rapid shutdown system, the one thing I forgot to mention was this inverter comes with a Tigo rapid shutdown module for your solar panels. So as long as you have your rapid shutdown modules on your, each of your solar panels, this has a built-in communicator right inside of here that's controlled with the rapid shutdown system. So that's pretty cool. One thing that some controllers do not come with and is built right into this one. So not only do you get the emergency stop switch with the controller, you also get the built-in module. So you're pretty much code compliant with this as soon as you buy the setup. Plus, I just didn't put my sticker up here yet that you get along with it, so. Anyway, so if you stuck around this long in the video, I really appreciate it. I hope you got something out of this. This will be one of many videos on this setup. I'm gonna be going over unboxing, install, setup of the batteries, you know, the wiring, and uh, just some other testing and whatnot with the system. So, uh, Stick around. I hope you're subscribed. If you're not, hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cost you anything. Helps out the channel. Uh, if you're looking for any products, check the link down below. Uh, I got Amazon links down there, affiliate links, uh, and stuff with Signature Solar. There's also that coupon code down there I tell you about. Uh, so thank you very much for using those. It does help. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care. That has good customer service based in the U.S. And we just shut down. Stand by.